Today on Houston Life, we are celebrating International Women's Day. She went from teaching in Bel Air High School to rubbing elbows with Amy Poehler. We'll meet the local teacher behind the new Netflix film, Moxie. Plus, we are honoring women taking the world of wine by storm. How you can be a part of virtual tastings streaming live across the country. Then we'll learn how one local woman used her inspiration from her trip to Africa to build a huge business that is now giving back to the community. All that and more happening today on Houston Life. Live from Studio B and KPRC2. Houston Life starts now. Well, happy Monday, everyone. It is March 8th. Welcome to Houston Life. So glad to have KPRC2's Lauren Freeman in today for Courtney. How you doing? Wonderful. Excited it's to be here today. I got the call kind of last minute, and I was excited to get to come in. We're always happy when you pay us a visit here. And I know you wear a lot of hats, busy professional. You're a mom. You're a wife. You got the family thing going on. So we appreciate your time well, today. thank you. Thank you. It's always fun. You know, last time I got to, like, hit a pinata, and I was kind of hoping I would take out some more aggression this time, too. Well, what? <laughs> to say that, uh, you know, there's not another we'll piñata. Yeah, stay tuned, right? Well, uh, listen, International Women's Day, I feel like yes. this is the perfect day um, for us to be chatting about all the accomplishments of the strong women in our lives. I didn't realize it, it started back in 1911. 1911. I didn't realize it had been that long either. Yeah, 110 years, mm -hmm. and we celebrate this day every March 8th. I think it's remarkable to look back over the past few decades and see just how far we've come. We talk a lot about equality on Houston Life. We talk a lot about this idea that for, for so long and even still, women get paid less to do the same jobs that men do. And as far as we have come, we certainly want to acknowledge that progress. There's still a long, long way to go. Well, and it's, it's exciting too to A, watch the progress and B, to see that so many women, especially today, are getting to live their dreams and wear a lot of hats. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe 40, 50 years ago, not as many women were able to do that. I mean, they had... Um, I guess fewer opportunities, fewer choices, and so certainly that has come such a long way. And I think representation matters too, because I think sometimes it's hard for us to imagine, well, I know that I can do it because I've seen other people like me so doing true. it. You know, whether, so you know, true. we've talked about the first female astronaut, now we have the first female vice president in a long list of males. And when my mom and I discuss just her growing up, I need to, to write all these stories down because I often forget when she was in college, you know, she was not allowed to go to class if she had a pair of pants on mm -hmm. right from the dress code to, right. to so many other uh, to so many other things that right. that I could cite um, we've we've really come a long way can you imagine being told you can't wear pants no and and I remember reading that about different universities that that was the case that that the females had to wear dresses or skirts or you know there were certain restrictions with even like coats and things like that I mean, you, you wouldn't even think about that. What today. are the coat restrictions? I, you know, I, I don't recall it specific. Wow. You know, but I mean, maybe it had to be more formal. I, I really don't recall, but I do know that I'd read that somewhere even. Yeah, there's been a double standard for a long, long time. So, cheers to International Women's Day. We hope you're celebrating the the strong woman and women in in your lives. Mm -hmm. How have you been? We always love hearing about the kids and and seeing photos of your sweet family. We've been doing very well. We're putting our house back together after the deep freeze. I'm no. sure like many of you, we had busted pipes and what have you. And so that is officially finished as of a few days ago. Okay. So we had to cut some brick away, patch the leak, have the brick redone. <laughs> oh my gosh, what a pain. Yeah, it was, but you know what? The leak was outside. So, I mean, all things considered, I'd rather have it outside. Yeah, because so, we've heard all these stories of, I mean, coworkers, neighbors coming home to a totally, flooded, flooded totally. kitchen, so flooded house. So I will take the outdoors. I, we haven't checked our sprinkler system yet, which that has busted in the past with the cold weather here. So I'm going to wait until the sprinkler company comes, and then I'm going to have them turn it on in case. The, the last time it was spraying out of the side of my house, and, and I just don't care to redo that. So I can't. they can't come till the 23rd. They're so busy. What did the boys think when the water was spraying out the side of the house? Probably seems kind of um, exciting to be a kid. Yes. It's like a giant sprinkler you can run through. Yes, except for that I was freaking out. And then I was, I knew I needed to turn the water off at the street, but you know, you need that tool. Mm -hmm. But I thought, you know what? I bet I can do it with my hand. And? Nope. 
I did not do it with my hand. Oh. I had to call someone to bring the tool. You climbed down into that hole yes, and tried I to do it with your hand? hand down there, yeah. Good for you. But it didn't work. But either way, I mean, we, we were trying, so. So many things that uh, nobody ever wanted to learn no, how to do. No, it's true, it's true. So I think we have a, a very cute picture of you with your little one. Oh, that's one my youngest, Rivers, yes. He likes to help make dinner sometimes. Wait, he's that grown up already? Yes, I know, he'll be two this summer. Wow, look Lies at that. Flies by. Do you always look this fashionable while you're making dinner? Um, no, I had just left work. Wow. <laughs> and, okay. And so, yes, I was dressed up at that moment. But you look no. great. Well, thank you. Work thank hard, you. play hard, right? Yes. And I know that this is one of the family hobbies, oh, right? Oh, my goodness. Taking the, the dirt boys bikes out. are big into dirt bikes right now. I mean, big time. So, yeah, we go like once a week, usually on Saturday or Sunday. And they go ride those. And they go on a little um, track thing. And when they call it dirt biking, there's a lot of dirt. A lot involved. of dirt. So what's <laughs> yes. the trip home like? It's not far. We go to Conroe. It's not but, far. But at all. they're covered in dirt the whole oh, ride yeah, home. Oh yeah, they're they're dirty. The bikes are dirty. I mean, it's a lot lot of dirt. Do you ever get out on the bike and ride yourself? Yeah, yeah, I like it. Do we have I pictures mean, of that? I, I, I don't see ride that. near as much as they do. And so my husband bought me like a like a full size, like what he thought would be my size of a bike, and so. It was too big. So Are you serious? It. You're you're a dirt biker. Yeah, but we sold mine. So now I ride my old one of my I, my oldest son had two, and so now I ride one of his. That is so cool. Yeah, it's Lauren. so much fun. It's, um, I guess when we first got into this, I thought it was like a little like moped that went like five miles an hour. Like I, I didn't really appreciate the fact that it, they're fast and powerful, and I. I, I had no experience. I yeah, they're so super fast. When my oldest was five, he said he wanted a dirt bike out of nowhere. And we're like, you can't even ride a bicycle a without bike. training wheels. <laughs> so we came home from work like two days later. He got my husband's tools. He went outside, took the training wheels off of his bike, taught himself how. And then he's like, now I want a dirt bike. To prove that he could do it. Yes. So we got a tiny little one. And and so I rode that like when we first got it. I mean, it was tiny. Like I look like a, like a clown on it. But... <laughs> It's fun. <laughs> and so that's when I realized, oh my gosh, these are like way more powerful than what I realized because I threw myself off of it pretty promptly. Oh no. No, I mean, I didn't hurt myself, obviously. Like, it's like being thrown off a horse, only a little bit different. Yeah, and I was telling my <laughs> husband, well, it, it took off with me on it. And he said, well, why didn't you let go? <laughs> Well, I don't know. <laughs> Funny thing about those yeah. dirt bikes. Yeah. They take off with you on them. That's so cool that that's one of your hobbies. Uh, yeah, I had fun. no idea. I feel like every time you come visit us here at Houston Life, I learn something new about you. Well, yeah. So that uh, hopefully that will be our last hobby for a while. Okay. Because, I mean, we were big into fishing for a while, but that required much less gear. Mm -hmm. And so with the dirt biking, I mean, you have the helmets and all the pads and the, you know, I mean, it's a lot of gear. It's a lot of gear yeah. to haul out there. Yeah. So I understand that your, your boys are so into this that sometimes they like fall asleep with their bikes. Is that right? Oh, my youngest, my one-year-old loves, loves, loves. Look at that. No. He takes the dirt bike with him to bed. Oh my god. A little toy one. Yes. That's so sweet. That's funny. That's so sweet. So he's a little too young to, to ride one himself, right. but it yes, sounds like yes. it's in his blood and yes, it's only Yes, but he likes time. watching his brothers and his dad. And so, yeah, he, he and I kind of sit on the sidelines and, and watch, but we still have fun. It sounds like a great yeah. time. Yeah. So I know it's 3 o'clock, and you've probably seen all the coverage from the yes. big Oprah interview mm -hmm. with Meghan Markle and Prince Harry last night. I know this is something that a lot of us are talking about. Yeah. And I knew that it would be a great interview because... You know, Oprah is so great. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize there would be so many bombshells, though, like Meghan Markle, you know, considering taking her own life, right. the racism she's experienced in the family. And it's pretty wild. I can't imagine what it must be like to be in the shoes of someone whose family's life is just constantly splashed. Can you imagine? You know, all well, over the tabloids. And, and you know, she's, she, she didn't, like, grow up around it. Like... Like her husband did. And yeah. so it's such a different contrast and perspective than for her to kind of join it yeah. later on. Well, and I thought it was really um, forthcoming of Harry, Prince Harry, to say that he inherited this, I mean, fill in the blank, drama, all of that. But he described his, his brother and his father as being trapped in the royal family. You know, when you're born mm -hmm. into a family like that, you, you don't choose to have this public, public life. Um, but I think what's interesting, though, is all of these like family 
secrets that maybe the royal family, back during the Diana days, there was a bit of scandal, right? There's always sure. been scandal sure. every generation. But uh, to have to have all of this, you know, just put out there for the public, it's got to be a really tough day for the royal family, too, and embarrassing for them. Well, and everybody was so surprised and watching for that. I mean, let's be honest, right? I mean, we wanted to hear what it was really like. I, to be around the royal family. I think so too. I've when the TV been, cameras are off. Right. Are they, does the queen really have people stretch out her new shoes so she can wear them, right? Right. I've never been a big royal watcher, but no. it did sort of in the office with our team, it inspired this conversation about when you were old enough, were there, were there family secrets, like deep dark family secrets that people finally let you in on? And we were reading these online forums on Reddit, and we have some pretty funny examples of these family secrets. Mm -hmm. Some of them are pretty, you know, benign. Mm -hmm. So this first one, grandma's top secret pie crust was actually just Marie Callender's from the grocery oh, store, wow. set in a fancier dish. So she would like mess with her daughters-in-law to make them think that, you know, she actually crea created it. It's pretty genius, I think. Yeah, but kind of deceitful too. Every family has I their guess, secrets, right? I mean, right? if that's your worst secret, like you're doing You're well. pretty good. Okay, another person wrote in and said, my aunt steals desserts from buffets. Is that that's a family secret? That's just your your aunt being right. your aunt. So remember when um, Ancestry DNA and the 23andMe kits started becoming more and more popular? Mm -hmm. You know, you, you spit into a tube and they test your DNA. Right, right. So you have to sort of check this box that you sign a waiver saying that the information contained in this report like may be alarming or upsetting because people are finding all sure. kinds of siblings, you know, half siblings, cousins, all of that. This happened to a dear friend of mine. This woman reached out to him and said, hey, we're cousins. But he didn't realize that he had? He didn't was realize. Was there more to the story? When his uncle was in high school, he ended up fathering a child and it, you know, it brought great shame to the family that this was the scenario. So this cousin just sort of was never, you know, it was never raised by the family. Yeah. But interesting, right? Yes, yes. No, I mean, I've heard similar scenarios with the ancestry. Yeah. It's where people get off of it because they're like, I have family coming out of the woodwork that I don't want to know. I don't, yeah, I know when you know too much. Right. My feeling is we don't really have any secrets. I mean, everyone has secrets, right? But I, I feel like I'm sort of an open book and my family too. And when you don't have any secrets, like there's nothing to say. It's true. I mean, he who has nothing to hide hides nothing, right? Who said that? I that's, can't remember. That's Not such me. a great quote. It's <laughs> a quote. You are so wise, Lauren Freeman. You, well, you can take credit for that. We'll, we'll, we'll give it <laughs> to you. Thanks. All right, we're going to have a lot of fun on today's show. And after the break, it is your turn to give a shout out to the special woman or women in your life as we continue celebrating International Women's Day. Plus, the Barbara Bush Houston Literacy Foundation and the Houston Rockets are teaming up to give children more access to books. Lauren Kelly has more about their annual book drive when Houston Live returns. Welcome back to Houston Life on this Monday, March 8th, also known as International yeah. Women's Day. An important day, certainly. So Very important who day. do you think has been the most influential woman in your life? I mean, I feel like the obvious choice is my mother, mm -hmm. right? For right. you? Same. Same. Yeah, I mean, I feel like n no matter the dynamic in a family, I feel like the the child always sort of defers to like the mom, right? Sure. Dads work hard, they, they wear a lot of hats as well. But I think for me, especially because my mom was the only parent uh, who was present in our lives, that she certainly had a major impact. And she had a very, I mean, it's interesting as, as, the, as the years go by, all of the milestones that my mom has, has experienced. Um, oh, this is your family. Yes, yes, Th there's that's my mom, mom on the far right there, yes. Oh, and isn't it great too, like when the grandkids come along and you can actually see that dynamic between mm -hmm. your strong mom and your children? Yes, because my kids, I mean, they, they, they love their grandmother so much. And so it's just so fun and exciting to get to watch that, yeah. There are so many things that I, I mean, I talk to my mom like probably five times a day, but my mom is so unbelievably patient and kind. She always gives benefit the benefit of the doubt to people 
people, sometimes I think to her detriment, right? Mm -hmm. But she has always taught me that, you know, when you pass someone on the street and you may have not the best interaction with them, you never know what that person is going through, right? You never know. They may have just gotten the worst news of their life. And so treating people with kindness and respect is something that from as long as I can remember, my mom instilled in us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so important. And same with mine. Um, I mean, just always taught me to um, be self-confident and to try my best, do my best. She was big on instilling academics into us and the importance of education and reading and things like that. I mean, she really was good about getting us to read from a young age. And she would take us to the library once or twice a week and we'd get a book and take it home. And I, I remember there were times where I would probably go pick out a book that was like way too advanced for me and like possibly inappropriate, but she'd be like, whatever. Like I was never big into fiction. I always wanted nonfiction. Oh, good. And so it was always like a historical type book, but like looking back, I'm like, oh, I'm not sure that that was appropriate at that age, but I was reading. <laughs> but you were reading and nonfiction is yeah, great because yeah. sometimes people want to, you know, shield their children from the events of the world. And you know, that's just sort of the reality. Right. Right. Living in crazy times. It's true. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's get to our question of the day. Yep. So we want to hear from you in honor of International Women's Day. Tag a special woman in your life on our Houston Live Facebook page and then give them a shout out because we know it's important and we know that they'll appreciate hearing from other people as well. Yeah. I have a feeling a lot of moms and grandmas are going to be getting a shout out true. today. Yeah. School teachers. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. Well, speaking of honoring special women, the Barbara Bush Houston Literacy Foundation and the Houston Rockets Women's Organization are teaming up to give children more access to books with a very special book drive. Yes. This year, Houstonians are asked to support childhood literacy virtually with their fifth annual HTX Reads Book Drive, which runs throughout the month of March. Lauren Kelly is at Toyota Center this afternoon with more. Hey, Lauren, how's it going? Hey, guys, look at this beautiful day. The weather really held out for us and all of our mascot friends here outside of the Curiosity Cruiser at Toyota Center and here to talk with us about this wonderful event where you can help with childhood literacy virtually this year is Julie. You have been a friend of ours for so long and really helped us with the Barbara Bush Houston Literacy Foundation. Tell us about what's happening for the month of March. Yes, well, March is National Read Aloud Month, so we are teaming up with Houston Rockets, Houston Rockets Women's Organization, Reliant, and our Ladies for Literacy Gold Guild to host the fifth annual HTX Reads Community Book Drive. We are here and calling upon the community to help stock one of three Curiosity Cruiser mobile libraries like the one you see behind us today. It's so wonderful. And can I also point out that all these women are here? I mean, Clutch, we see you too, but there's so many ladies here today. <laughs> let's step over. Let's talk to Leanne Scheider. You are with Reliant. You are the Reliance Director of Community. Now tell yes. us how we can support this. Yes, so as Julie mentioned, virtual this year to, to keep safe. And so you can do two super easy ways. One, you can text 91999 to 291999. Okay. Book drive, all one word. Or you can go to bushhoustonliteracy.org forward slash book drive. Now, Leanne, thank you so much for a Reliance big part in this. But yes. I've got all the information at houstonlife.tv in case anybody else needs those numbers and stuff. And you guys, Julie, don't move anywhere. Mascots don't go anywhere. I'm going to take us inside this Curiosity Cruiser coming up a little bit later on in the show. Derek and Lauren, back to you guys in studio. Very nice, Lauren Kelly. Thank you for that. Yes, sounds fun. Great effort. Still ahead, we are chatting with teacher-turned-author Jennifer Matu. Find out how her new book became the newest hit on Netflix. And next, what better way to honor and toast women than by opening a bottle of wine? Mm -hmm. Made by one. Mm -hmm. We are celebrating women in wine when Houston Life returns. Welcome back to Houston Life. In honor of Women's History Month, HEB is inviting us to raise a glass to help empower women around the world. They are spotlighting women-owned and women-made wines through virtual tastings streamed live from wineries across the country straight to your home. Here with more is HEB wine buyer Karen Bell. Welcome to Houston Life, Karen. It's great to see you. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm honored to be here to talk about what HEB is doing this month to celebrate Women's History Month. Yeah, it's really cool. We're going to get to a few of the wines. Let's talk about these virtual tastings, too, just so people have the info. People can actually go online and just sign up for a virtual tasting. Is that the way it works? 
Yes, um, you can go to heb.com slash wine tastings. And there we have a list of seven uh, uh, virtual tastings that we have going on this month um, on some in the evening, some on Saturday. So hopefully an option for everyone and hopefully people can come to more than one. Myself or another member of our um, HEB wine team will be interviewing some of these women, learning their stories and just sharing a glass with them. So we would love to have a bunch of your viewers um, sign up and join us. Super cool, heb.com slash wine tasting. Okay, Karen, so you were telling me during commercial break, you are a student of wine, which is so cool. It sounds like you have a great job. And essentially, <laughs> you have, because you are the buyer, you, you have a huge influence on what, what wines are actually available at HEB. And today you're gonna walk us through some of your picks. So uh, I know you've been doing this for a few years, but you've worked <laughs> in California. So you are the best of the best. Let's talk about um, the Chardonnay to begin. Sure, so we're gonna start with um, a Chardonnay from Wente Vineyards. Um, and Wente was founded in 1883, so it's a really old winery, um, especially for California. It's currently run by Carolyn Wente and some members of her family. Carolyn is the CEO, she's fourth generation family, and then the fifth generation is also alive and well with female, female leaders um, in viticulture and brand management. So it's just a great female run company. Um, this Chardonnay is from the Central Coast region, which may not be the first area you think of when you think about Chardonnay, but the Wentes actually brought a really famous clone of Chardonnay to the U.S. Um, in the early 20th century. So they know their Chardonnay. Um, and in this one, I get just a great um, fruit of yellow apple, some pineapple, and then just this little kiss of like toasted creme brulee, which is just so nice. Great acidity on the tongue. When I tasted it, I really wanted to make a citrus salad with maybe some fennel and some goat cheese. It's just a really light, refreshing, um, nice Chardonnay. Also at $12, this bottle is a home run. It's super rich, creamy, smooth. It doesn't give you any of that acidic weirdness that sometimes make you like, you know, clench your jaw. Delicious. <laughs> Let's move on uh, to the next one. This is a Bordeaux. Yes. So um, this is the Legend Bordeaux Rouge um, from the, the Domaine de Rothschild. Um, and great story there. They've been, they're a very famous family. They make everything from these sort of entry level approachable Bordeaux all the way up to Grand Cru. Um, Saskia de Rothschild is the current chairwoman um, of the company. And then this wine, also um, the Bordeaux Rouge, was made by Diane Flamand, a female winemaker. Um, this one is 50% Cabernet and 50% Merlot. And I just think the Merlot is the star here. It's very delicate, beautiful red, strawberry and raspberry fruit, um, and very soft on the palate. That Merlot gives it real delicacy, but there's still that backbone of Cabernet that will make it a great food pairing wine. I would love this with a leaner cut of barbecue, maybe the brisket, or if you're doing a cheese plate, maybe with some strong blue cheese, this wine could stand up to that. Um, so just a really nice wine. If you have tried French wines and they weren't your jam in the past, Try something like this. Um, it's really approachable, good entry into French wines. All right, and am I imagining things when I closed my eyes? It smells like a bouquet of roses. Yes, there's right? definitely some floral notes, maybe some violet too. Mm. Um, yeah, it's a great, great nose on this one. Okay, Karen, two great choices so far. I'm expecting the third will be as well. We got less than a minute, but tell us about uh, this beautiful Cabernet Sauvignon. So this is the uh, Hess Collection um, Special Cuvée Cabernet um, called the Maverick from Maverick Ranch and made by Allison Rodriguez, a great female winemaker trained in Germany. This is your quintessential California Napa Cabernet. Great dark fruit, mocha, dark chocolate, just really great with a steak um, and, a, and a little bit of a heavier meal. This can stand up to it. It's a beautiful bottle. This one's a little pricier at $28. It would make a great gift. Karen, I wish that we could spend the, the full hour doing a wine tasting. So is my only chance to do this again, to sign up for one of these virtual tastings with you? Yeah, so we would love to have you, although we are more than happy to come back and taste wine with you anytime. So thank you so much for having us and uh, happy International Women's Day to all of your viewers. Happy International Women's Day indeed, Karen Bell. Cheers to you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll do it again soon. And to our viewers, as a reminder, you can find today's featured wines at your local HEB. And be sure to visit HEB.com slash wine tastings to sign up for those month-long virtual tastings. And uh, I got to tell you, you don't want to miss that.
This is probably one of my favorite segments I've ever done. All right, now let's check in with Joe Sam, who is highlighting a woman-owned business today. What's up, Joe? Hey, Derek, having a good time over there, I see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, still to come, I'll introduce you to one strong woman inspiring the community with her creative, colorful, and bold backpacks, all supporting the continent of Africa. And we'll get a check of what's ahead for the news at 4. Houston Life is back in two minutes. Welcome back to Houston Life. I'm Derek Shore along with KPRC 2's Lauren Freeman in for Courtney today. The time is now 3.30 on the dot on this International Women's Day. Yes, so it's time to hear from you, as a matter of fact, in honor of International Women's Day, we asked you to visit our Houston Life Facebook page and tag a special woman or women in your life and give them a shout out. So here's what you had to say. We're gonna bring up some now. Yeah, Judy writes in, Brenda Lewis, we worked together as nurses side by side for 25 years. She helped me through stage four cancer. We are both now retired, very special. Judy, wow, what a great story. Yeah. Thanks for sharing Brenda's. And someone that they work together. Yeah, I mean. that is fantastic. I mean, I feel like all the time we have these mentors who could be our same age, a peer, a colleague, someone we go to church with. So that's a lovely story, Judy. I love that one. Yes. Yeah, so we have one more that we want to bring up here. My grandmother who taught me so much. Look at that sweet picture of them. Especially when it comes to putting family first. She was the best and was always there. Aww. So it's not always just moms, but grandmothers too. Yeah, yeah. I know a lot of a lot of moms and grandmas again getting some love today on this International Women's Day. Yes. As it should be, too. As it should be. Yeah. I hope you're getting a lot of love because I know you're sort of outnumbered at I, home. I'm outnumbered <laughs> by a lot. In yes. a house full of, yes. full of men. Yes. All right. Six men in my house. Now let's check in with Christine, Andy, and Frank for a look at what is coming up at four. Guys, how are you celebrating International Women's Day? You know, Lauren, happy International Women's Day to you. A mom of five. I mean, moms are rock stars. They right. put up with a lot. And Lauren, you're you're at the top of the list up there. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Know, you. We always talk about that. Yeah, my mom, shout out to her. She raised four kids. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of women, like you you meet a woman and you you know that there is a story behind them. You know, so I think that for all the women out there, way it's to a tough go. job. Yeah. yeah. Yep. <laughs> All right, it is a nice and comfortable Monday across the Houston area. Frank, we can definitely yeah, work we with can. this. You know, no complaints at all. In fact, we're going to start feeling more and more like summer as the week continues. You can see, hard to find even a cloud in the sky out there. I, Abacus camera right now has 70, 72, 73, 67 down on the island. You notice that east-southeast wind. That's going to be with us all week. It uh, looks like uh, until the weekend. 72, Tomball and Conroe, and 70 in Pearland. So going to walk the dog, take a walk yourself. Right there in the 70, 66 by 6 and 62 at so really nice weather. That's what to thank. That big high pressure, it is sprawling across the eastern United States. It will start to bring more and more southeast uh, flow in here, which means it's going to get warmer, a little coastal fog, maybe a little drizz uh, drizzle by the end of the week. And then that system that you see spinning right here, that low eventually comes our way, and that means a weekend front. But not, it doesn't look like, until Sunday. So we'll talk more about that at 4, give you the numbers on this warming trend. It's going to, I think we're going to see 80s by the time we get to the middle of the week. More on the fog and that next front will time it out for Sunday. All right, Frank, thanks so much. Here's a look at some of the stories that we are covering for you this afternoon. A big development involving Houston ISD interim superintendent, Dr. Granita Lathan. She is leaving the district. We're expecting to hear from her in the next half hour. We'll have more details about where she's going coming up at four and when that takes effect. Also developing today, new guidelines out from the CDC about gatherings and mask wearing for people who have gotten both doses of the vaccine. We're gonna show you what the CDC is recommending for those folks. Plus an update on where things stand with those $1,400 stimulus checks. What has to happen next in the process and how soon before the money could be in your bank account. Yeah, so certainly a lot coming up at 4 o'clock today, you guys. All right, we'll be watching. Thanks. Yeah, great way to kick off this week. As we continue to celebrate women's history, we do want to introduce you to one local woman who used her inspiration to build a bold and colorful business. Very colorful. Africa on my back is a local business started five years ago. Joe Sam is learning more about their increasing popularity, selling those very colorful products like backpacks, right, Joe? Yeah, that's right. 
Bright Lauren and Derek Shanet rather prices of force here in Houston and now in Ghana, West Africa, as well as after creating all of these stylish and functional backpacks that all have a connection to African culture and heritage. Now I learned now how she got her drive and how to make this all happen and pushing her sons and the community to follow in her footsteps. Jeanette, tell us a little bit about your inspiration behind making these beautiful products. Walking in here just really made my eyes light up looking at all of those cultural African pieces that we have here. 2016, went to Ghana, life-changing experience. I was so blown away that at the time, my son was 14, and six months after my trip to Ghana, I brought him. And while he was there, I just saw this level of freedom that he had. I saw how he grasped the culture and the language and the food. Um, and it just made me think about how African-American children need to go back to the continent. And I thought about what better way to help the artisans there, not by starting an NGO or nonprofit or giving money, but allowing them to broaden their reach. And so they're broadening their reach by, you know, working with us. Now you have two sons, correct? So tell us more about that brilliant Black Boys program and what do they get after seeing that inspiration that you're putting out there, the motivation, the hard work and determination that you have for running Africa on my back. It has to be really, really rewarding for them to see that strong mama taking the charge. Well, they know that mama is always hitting it. Um, you know, and that is the importance of them. My oldest son, he works in the business, so he does the fulfillment after school um, when we have large shipments come in we have some of his friends that come you know I pay them and they work for us so they are seeing business firsthand you ex have expanded into so many other products what other things are we seeing in here oh my gosh so we are <laughs> just coming out with a diaper bag so we have diaper bags we now have a yoga bag oh. <laughs> for your yoga uh, your yoga mat we have lunch bags we're coming out with these soon we also have fans and mm. pencil cases anything practical that you need to either go to school or go to work we have it we I have love coats. it we have ties for guys passport covers anything you need inspired myself, I really think so, but I'm pulling on the strength of my ancestors, you know, who, who've been in this country for 400 plus years, um, who've built monuments and built the White House, and they've done all these tremendous things, and so to me, it's who am I not to be able, you know, who am I not to be able to, to run Africa on my back and to build it up from scratch? So that's what keeps me motivated, and uh, we're here to stay. Yeah, they're going to be staying here for a very long time. Now, Jeanette says she wants to continue using this as a bridge to provide study abroad opportunities for her brilliant Black Boys initiative that seeks to empower African-American young men through international travels. I'll have a link on our website, HoustonLife.tv, where you can find all of her products and learn more about her initiative. Derek Lauren, I had to go and sport my little sporty outfit today to go along with the backpack because I had to check it out. Look at that there. I'm like the perfect model great. for her. Yeah, and it really is cool because she gives back so much to those young men and all of the proceeds that she gets, the majority of it goes back to helping them travel abroad and get those study opportunities out there just to make them better men. It's amazing what she created and how it's grown. Yes, all they, all they are starting from just a small idea and it is incredible. I love, I've been sporting this for the past month and I've been getting compliments everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm going to check out a couple more products, even a couple of masks. All right, Very nice, Joe. <laughs> all right. Thanks so much. Up next, Moxie is the newest hit on Netflix. After the break, we are chatting with a Bel Air High School teacher whose novel inspired the film and even caught the eye of Amy Poehler. Houston Life will be right back. Hey, Mom, what do uh, 16 year olds care about? When I was 16, all I cared about was smashing the patriarchy and burning it all down. Well, that was a clip of Netflix's brand new movie, Moxie, a film that highlights the importance of female empowerment. It is based on a book by the same name, written by a local author and high school teacher, Jennifer Matu, who joins us now on this International Women's Day. So, Jennifer, thanks for being here with us today. And if you can first just tell us just the basic gist of this book and this film. 
Well, thank you so much for having me. Um, so Moxie is a book that I wrote uh, that came out in 2017. And it's about a, a teenage girl in a small Texas town who decides she's kind of fed up by the way that young women are treated in her high school. Um, the boys' sports tend to get all the funding. Um, they get a, the boys get away with sort of harassing girls in the hallway. And so she kind of takes a page from her mom's rebellious, activist past and she starts this revolution in her high school called moxie um but it's anonymous nobody knows that she started it and it kind of builds and grows and other girls sort of take on the moxie name and then of course administration doesn't like it uh and and our our protagonist and her friends have to make some tough choices but it's got a really hopeful, positive message for women and girls. Um, and Amy Poehler has adapted the movie, uh, has adapted the book into film so beautifully. Um, it's different from the novel in some ways, but um, it captures the spirit of what I wrote and, it, and it's its own cool thing. So I am so thrilled with this adaptation. I'm very, very fortunate. You must be thrilled, Gee. Jennifer. Not just fortunate, but talented. I think it is so great that you're a former journalist. Now you're an English teacher at Bel Air High School. Apologies, we are literally interrupting your school day right now. <laughs> your students are at a teacher's class next door, so you can appear on our show. Fast yes. forward from the time you finish this book, Holy cow, Netflix, Marsha Gay Harden, Patrick Schwarzenegger, Amy Poehler, you have these huge stars who are reading the lines that you wrote. How did all this happen? Yeah, so I was actually, I am at Beller High School and my colleague next door has taken my students so that I can be here mask free with you. Um, but I was actually here at Bel Air in the teacher's lounge when my agent called to let me know that um, Amy Poehler's production company was interested in optioning the book for film. And, and this was actually in 2016, before the book even came out, there was some buzz building about it. And, um, and so I remember my agent called me and I like took a piece of paper and I wrote down like Amy Poehler, <laughs> like I was gonna forget. Very helpful. It was, <laughs> and, and then it just happened. It just kind of, you know, it's been a process. First it was optioned, then Netflix bought it and then, you know, a lot of books get optioned and they, they never actually get to the screen. And so for this to actually happen is is just, it's bonkers. <laughs> so exciting. So are you planning to write any more books or maybe a sequel? So, um, so Moxie is my fourth novel um, and I write young adult fiction for Macmillan. Uh, that's my publisher. And my sixth book is coming out um, in the fall of 2021 in October. And it's kind of Moxie-esque. It's, it's about a girl gang um, and it's set in Houston in 1964. It's called Bad Girls Never Say Die. So it's not a sequel to Moxie, but it's got that same that same spirit. So if you're a fan of Moxie, you can look for that one in October. Well, that's exciting. I think this is so incredible. I think you're an absolute star, Jennifer. <laughs> and you gotta let us know what it was like when this film was in production. We saw the photo of you with Amy Poehler um, just a moment ago. Make, be sure you write down her name so you don't forget <laughs> it. Um, but I understand you have a cameo in the film playing a chemistry teacher. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Yes, yes, and um, you you literally will blink and miss it, and that is fine with me. I am I am much more comfortable behind a computer than a screen, but um, yes. Yeah, so it's it's a cameo, and they did my hair and makeup, and visiting the set was so fun. Um, I was so impressed by the number of people that it takes to make a film happen. Um, and everybody had their one unique job and everybody was working really, you know, carefully together. It was a very fun set. Um, I got to meet Amy Poehler. I got to meet several members of the cast. They were all so lovely. Um, and then I was very nervous. You know, all I had to do was stand there and like draw on the board or something. It was, <laughs> they didn't ask a lot of me, but I was very, very nervous. Mm -hmm. but, but yes, you can see me very briefly about like 48 minutes in, in a chemistry classroom. Okay, well, we're gonna look for it. what did your students think of this? I mean, they must be very impressed. You must be like a local celebrity there now. You know, they're really supportive. They're very sweet. Um, you know, I teach under my married name. And so they, they at first they're like, is that you, you know? Uh, and, and they're kind of confused. And then, you know, I, I, I've recommended some of my books, but I don't push my books because I don't want them to think I'm like, you know, just promoting myself. But sometimes they'll ask and, you know, which one of my of your books would I like? And 
you know, so, and I have had some really nice students, you know, reach out and let me know they saw the movie and they read the book and it's really sweet. But I do feel that as a teacher, my primary role is to teach young people. Um, I always say I have the two best jobs in the world and that's teaching young people and writing for them. And they both matter so much to me. Agreed, agreed. Well, Jennifer Matu, Beller High School English teacher, author, rising superstar <laughs> in Hollywood. Keep us up to date. We're going to look for your cameo 46 minutes into that film. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. It was yes. really fun. And to connect with Jennifer, you can visit our website at HoustonLife.tv. Yeah, and you can catch Moxie streaming right now on Netflix. I know what I'm going to do yeah, tonight. Yeah, absolutely. And tomorrow, Lauren Kelly is catching up with Moxie's actresses, Hadley Robinson and Alicia Pasquale Pena. Very, very nice. So proud of her. Now let's check in with Lauren Kelly, who is helping put books in kids' hands today. Hey there, Lauren. How's it going? Hey guys, you got it. This is the Curiosity Cruiser. It's a mobile library. I'm going to tell you guys how you can get involved with it when we come back. Don't move. Got lots of fun still in store for Houston Life. Hey, Clutch, this is for you. Reliant and the Barbara Bush Houston Literacy, Literacy Foundation are hosting a virtual book drive. It's their fifth annual one. We're so glad to have been asked to help out again. And there's some very special people behind the scenes. Felicia Stone, you're going to tell us about who is all involved in this. Hi, how Hi. are you? <laughs> well, I'm with the Rockets Women's Organization, and we are proud to partner with Reliant and the Barbara Bush Literacy Foundation once again to help promote literacy in children and get books into children's hands. Which is perfect for Women's History Month as well, right? Absolutely. Uh, well, Absolutely. Thank you for chatting with us today, but we're going to go take a little look-see inside. This is the Curiosity Cruiser. Have you seen this? I have seen it, but I want to see it again. Okay, Let's take well, another come look. Come on with us, you guys. We're going to take the ramp up, and we're going to walk in. It's a mobile library, and they have a few of these that actually travel around town. So I'm going to get you guys to come on up with us. And Julie Baker Fink, she's going to be telling us all about this Curiosity Cruiser. This is amazing. Yes, so this is actually our second Curiosity Cruiser mobile library, and they are sponsored by our Ladies for Literacy Guild. And we're so excited that next month we are going to actually hit the streets of our third Curiosity Cruiser mobile library. And so that we actually have a partnership with the Harris County Public Library. And so they take these out into the community and kids get an opportunity not just to check out a book, but they get to keep a book to build their home library. And so that's why we need everybody's help this month during the book drive to help us stock not just this Curiosity Cruiser, but the other two that serve our community. It's all about the experience. You know, like I have memories of going to the book drive and, and just picking out the books and the smell of the books. is It's all part of the whole process, right? Yeah, and absolutely. And during the pen pandemic, you know, a lot of kids don't have access to their school library, their main library, and their maybe their neighborhood library. And so they're missing that experience. And of course, many kids don't have books in their own home. And so we're here to help fill that gap. And our Ladies for Literacy Guild are so committed and we're so thankful to have the partnership with the Houston Rockets and Reliant really to make this possible for so many kids. It's, it's it's just so wonderful, and I'm so glad that you do this. Tell everybody where they can go to find either the Curiosity Cruiser or get more info. You actually can just go to curiositycruiser.com, and you'll be able to see, I think they post where they're going to be in the in the neighborhood. <laughs> um, and then we also um, will be able to provide some programming. So it's going to really hit the streets hard this summer. Um, we're very excited to, to get back out there and serve more kids. But in the meantime, we hope that everyone will go and donate books this, this summer. Wonderful. Julie, thank you so much. If you guys need anybody to drive, the cruiser. I'm available. I can do it for you. Let's drive too. Let's <laughs> drive too. If you guys want more info, HoustonLife.tv is the place to find it. Derek and Lauren, back to you guys in the studio. I have some reading to do. Look you at this. You have a special license for that. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. It is a fantastic <laughs> cause, though. Lauren Kelly, thanks so much. After the break, a look at what's coming up on tomorrow's show, including ways to shop and save. And as we head into break, let's check in with Nichelle Turner for a look at what's coming up on Entertainment Tonight. Lauren and Derek, tonight on E.T., the bombshells and new burning questions about Harry and Meghan's tell-all with Oprah, plus how Meghan's royal life mirrored Princess Diana's. You don't want to miss it. That's tonight at 6.30 on KPRC2. Now, stay right there. Houston Life will be right back.
Coming up tomorrow on Houston Live, two stars from the Netflix film Moxie, Hadley Robinson and Alicia Pasquale Pena chat with Lauren Kelly about the importance of making our voices heard. And HL Obsessions Day is back from high performance men's clothing to a jewelry line perfect for working out, even handmade bags, how you can get up to 15% off some of our favorite local brands. I'll be watching and maybe shopping. And maybe <laughs> shopping, right? It will Tex looks very comfortable next to you. Though, I know. Lauren. Tex is happy here. Yeah, I, I love dogs. I used to have a dog that looks somewhat like him. Smaller. But, but your dog was a little smaller? Mm -hmm. What kind a, of dog a was Maltese. he? A Maltese. Oh. Yes, a Maltese, like the best Maltese ever. And he just got old and, as and dogs, died. As and dogs so, do. Yeah. But he was so wonderful to have, yeah. Just like we love Tex, too. Tex is a good boy. Tex is a great dog. He is so easy. I mean, beautiful and well-behaved and... Oh, I mean, look qu at quit this. talking about me like that, Lauren. No, I'm just... You too, Jerry. I'm just kidding. <laughs> hey, this was really fun. Thank you for having me again. Of course, we love when it. you stop by. Thanks for filling in for Courtney yes, and yes, saying hi to the family. Course. We'll do. We'll do. We'll see you at 5 o'clock. But okay. in the meantime, it is 4 o'clock. You know what that means? KPRC 2 News at 4 starting now. There's Andy and Christine. Hi, friends.